I learned some lessons at LVO. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Glacial Geek Deep Thoughts Thin Coats with me, Phil the Glacial Geek. Uh, today, I am going to be work, continuing to work on some of my Gene Stealer cult, which I'm very excited about. Uh, their new codex coming out. You saw my, my initial thoughts on it, and honestly, uh, having gotten my hands on the codex and looking through it all, uh, my initial thoughts are pretty much in line with, with what I found in there. I haven't found anything that's like super sneaky, and I really want to try to try to make a, a run with but I'm, I'm still working on trying to figure out how I'm going to put together my first list I've got a, a team tournament coming up this weekend that I'm going to be part of a thousand points I'm going to be running my Gene Stealer cult there and we'll see how it goes I'm really as much as all the other things going on with uh, the Twisted Helix and whatever I really still keep pulling back towards uh, the Forearmed Emperor uh, the cult of the Forearmed Emperor because They've got uh, access to a cool to cool warlord traits, and the fact that they have plus one inch to their charge <clears throat> makes all the difference. And in all of my experience with Gene Stealer Cold previously, and this all may change come come whenever I really start getting into it and playing more of these games. But the fact is that previously, whenever I'd play Gene Stealer Cold, if they could make those charges, they were unstoppable. They were just they were just dominant, and they were just really really good and they would just be a force to be reckoned with. And I feel like having that plus one inch to the charge that first time when they come out is so crucial to, to the Gene Stealer cult being able to do what they need to do that it, it really it, it really feels like the way to go for me going forward. And like I said, that might change, but that's kind of how I'm feeling right now, feeling the, the forearmed emperor really hard. Um, and to show it all off, start it all off, I kind of want to show off a fully painted miniature, which I don't really do usually on here, but this guy was super cool. I got an idea from the Gene Stealer Cult Facebook page uh, that I ran with, um, and essentially it's, it's, it was harkening back to the lore that the Nexos, which is this little, little guy here, um, they don't usually leave their strategium very often. And they were talking about how it would be cool to run him as a drone. And someone else commented in the bottom there and said, well, why not make it look like he's a projection? And I was like, that's awesome. And I it just, for whatever reason, it, like when I, when, you know, every once in a while when you see those ideas, you, you, you get an idea and it just clicks. And you're like, yes, I've got to do that. And that was, this is one of them. So I decided to paint him up like this, make him look like the projection on the map. So you see he's the, the same exact... Uh, paint scheme as uh, his little 3D map that he's got there. So the idea being that the the, the floating platform is out in the field, uh, allow allowing them him to communicate with the rest of the cult as they're going to battle, and uh, getting more information back to him. <clears throat> and then he's just a force projection there to aid with with interactions and whatnot. So I thought it was kind of a cool idea, and I kind of went with it, and uh, I did it. And of course. Having the they they have on the model itself, there's little scratches through the Aquila, but uh, I went with the the painted out like I've been doing with a lot of my other uh, the the Brood Brothers stuff now uh, that I've done previously. So I thought it was kind of fun and cool. But yeah, I just want to show them off because I was really kind of proud with this one. <laughs> um, and like I said, I'm gonna be painting up some more ne uh, acolytes because I think acolytes are the way forward with these guys. Uh, I'm running a bunch of them in this thousand point list alone. I'm running, what is it, six times, 30 of them, and going forward when I get into a battalion and, and whatnot, I think I'm going to be running a heck of a lot of these guys. I think they're going to be super effective. Seven points a piece, two attacks, they've got Rend 1 on their base claw, then they have an extra attack that's Rend 0, but I mean, an extra attack, got to make them roll their dice with a cultist knife. Uh, they're, they're cheap as heck, and they, they're super effective, and if you roll a six to wound with those Rending Claws, it's AP minus four, I mean pretty awesome you know <laughs> you can't really you can't not gonna lie you know, get a lot of shots in there you can run them with the hand flamers i've only got guys with um with auto pistols right now going the cheap way uh, that might change we'll see what happens as i start making more and more lists um but yeah so i thought that was kind of that's kind of fun that's what i'm going to be working on model wise uh discussing i'm going to start off by talking about my experience at lvo and then that's going to lead into um the, the the crux of the discussion that i'm going to have uh, which is, I'm going to get to, which is getting a grasp on the meta and understanding how all of that, uh, how it all works and what that means for you making lists and, and, and playing in, in tournaments. 
um, and just get an idea. So even if you're just going to your local game store and understanding what it is that you're facing and what it is that you expect to see, uh, it'll be interesting to see how it all, all pans out. So my experience at LVO was incredible. I had six amazing games uh, against six amazing opponents. Uh, they were so much fun, so much fun. Not a single salty jerk to be seen uh, on the tables that I was at. Everyone had fun, um, and everyone just uh, played and, and, and played hard. They were playing to win. Um, you know, and I, and I went up against some really tough lists. I went up against um, I went up against a list with three Night Crusaders in it. Um, I went up against a list that had five flying giant flying demon thingies. So it, it, the list consisted of uh, Magnus, Mortarian, the Fate Weaver, Lord of Change, and a Bloodthirster with the Melta Axe, and it was I mean, it was brutal. I played that game on a uh, on stream at uh, at the GW stream on Twitch, which was super fun, and I heard a lot of people were cheering me on on Twitch, and I really appreciate that. All the fans out there uh, getting getting my back for that one. And it was at one point <laughs> at one point. Um, Jeff, one of the announcers there, as I was coming over to put more of my guys <laughs> dead onto my uh, onto my tray, le- uh, looks over and says, "Hey Phil, the the chat's really got your back on here." I was like, "Too bad my dice don't." <laughs> um, yeah, so I got I got pummeled in that game against those. Uh, I mean the 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 way it was, and I just had some bad luck with dice, but I also had he also um, was very strategic in how he played it, and and just outmaneuvered me, and ended up with a, a well deserved victory on that one. I also lost to the three Night Crusader list, and I ended up losing against um, against Danielle's against her Eldar. So she was running the um, not Aleta, she was running Oathway with a whole bunch of Guardians, and uh, there was an Avatar of Cain and a bunch of uh, witches for the Dark Eldar. It was like a mix of of all sorts of Eldari deliciousness in there. Um, but and it was it was brutal. It was really good, and she played it super well. Um, and managed to just uh, outplay me and, and beat me fair and square, which was which was fun. But literally, it didn't matter if I was winning, didn't matter if I was losing. Every single one of my opponents was uh, an absolutely amazing person to play against, and I had an amazing uh, weekend at LVO. Uh, it was also awesome to walk around and get to meet some people and talk to people and just have a really great time and, and really experience what it was like to have hundreds and hundreds of nerds all doing what you what you do, uh, gathered in the same place and just uh, having a really good time, um, and it's it's just fun to get there. It really really energizes you. It really really puts a little little kick in your step when you get to be surrounded by all these people that are that are putting in the same amount of time and effort and work into it that you do, uh, and just having a really good time. And there were some incredible players there. You know, every single one of the names that you recognize when they pop up on on, on Facebook feeds or whatever, um, they were there and they were having a great time. And it really was really was a, a fantastic tournament. Um, not not a whole lot of drama as far as I saw, uh, as far as I've heard even. And it was just a, a really really good time. So, kudos to Frontline Gaming for running uh, an incredible uh, tournament and an incredible uh, convention in in general. For everyone that went, and it really was a really was an awesome time. So, really appreciate them for for doing that and just having a good time. So, uh, this kind of leads into what I really want to talk about, and the crux of what I want to talk about is getting a grasp of the meta. So, I went uh, three and three. I don't know if I mentioned that. I went three and three. Uh, so, I won three, lost three games. Uh, and to be honest, I didn't run into a lot of what I well, I ran into some of what I expected. But I didn't run into um, an excessive amount of what I expected, and I think that is a sign of the times here in Eighth Edition. Is that it's become very difficult to really put a grasp on what is the meta. You know, towards the end of Seventh Edition, and I think even in the beginning parts of, of Eighth Edition, uh, you could go into a tournament with a, with a fair understanding of what to expect. Um, I made my list uh, designed to make, see if I was going to be handling against knights, and I ran into I ran into a knight list, um, but I also ran it understanding that I was probably going to run into some horde lists, so running into either tyranid hordes or orc hordes more specifically. And I brought units to be able to handle that, and I didn't see any orc players. Well, I should say I didn't run into any orc players. There were orc players there, but not 
as many as honestly I expected to see uh, from how they've been performing because they've been performing pretty well. And I know, you know, people are going to say it's like, well, it was all Night Castellans. There were, there were a fair amount of Night Castellans there. Uh, but they weren't necessarily um, the end-all, be-all of the tournament. I know the winner, Brandon, uh, Brandon Grant, had uh, a Knight Castellan in his list. But if you watch that game, that final game that he played against Alex Harrison, it was he lost the Knight very early. And it hadn't done a whole lot of work at that point. So he was sitting there, and he was left with a situation where he didn't have the knight as he had expected to have, and he was going up against uh, a guy with with, I think it was like seven Eldari flyers somehow. I think it was like, it was like three of the, three of a bunch of them, and then I don't know. He had a bunch of flyers out there, and he played the game flawlessly. He played the game flawlessly. He went. He played to the objectives. He knew what he was doing. Uh, did his best to, to hide guys and, and, and target priorities so that he could stay alive and be able to jump onto the objectives. He chose his secondaries perfectly. Uh, he chose ground control, which is he gets the points at the end of the game. So he just held them off until that last turn of the game and managed to jump onto enough objectives that he pulled out the victory, I think, by one point or something like that. So, um, <clears throat> you know, there were plenty of knights out there. Um, I think knights are obviously still super strong, and you're going to see a lot of them. Uh, but that's not the only thing that you're going to face, especially now with, honestly, with these guys coming out um, and the orcs that I think just getting up some steam. You're going to see a fair number of uh, of horde armies coming out and hordes that can handle knights. Uh, you know, Gene Steeler Colt, I think, have a lot of ways of handling knights. Uh, the the fact that you've got ways to buff aberrants so that they're swinging at like at like strength 16 with their hammers uh, is, is pretty impressive. And I think that's going to make a bunch of knights just drop off the table if you get enough of those attacks in. Um, they really work well. Uh, there's things like mental onslaught where you could just psych uh, psych a knight off the table, you know, when you when you jump into there, and <clears throat> they're going to be super effective. And I think they're going to be very very strong going forward, and it's going to shake up the meta. And like I said, trying to get a grasp of the meta becomes important when you're building your list because you have to know and understand what it is that you're going to be facing off against when you when you go into these games when you're making these lists so that when you go in and start generally in your army you can go in with an understanding of that that you have the tools to allow you to handle the certain situation so i know there's a lot of people out there it all depends on the player and it's, it's very true if you look at the top tables of these big major tournaments it's a lot of the same guys with a lot of similar names playing not necessarily the same army doing really well in these tournaments and it's because they're very good players they're very good players who know what they're doing with their list and they know what they're doing with their army and it doesn't necessarily mean whatever army it is so you see nick rose up there with with index gsc did very well you see um nick nanavati went through and he ended up in very you know he didn't i don't think he ended up winning uh lvo uh he didn't win lvo but he also don't think he won itc but he did very well, and he was leading ITC for most of the year. And I think he played four different armies throughout the year in different tournaments. You know, he played Space Marines, he played uh, Eldari, he played uh, he may have played Demons even, so maybe fifth because he also had Orcs and he had Tyranids. I mean, the guy plays whatever he wants to play, and he makes lists that do very well. And he because he's a very strong player who knows his rules and knows what to do. And when he sees you show up across the table from him. Um, he knows what your army does. He knows how to, what it's going to be trying to do against his army. And then he knows how to counter it, you know? And that's how you become a better player. Um, and, you know, at the, and when push comes to shove, the better players are going to do better uh, in these tournaments, you know? And um, especially when it comes down to the late game, when you're going into day three of these tournaments and you're playing, you know, you're, you're working on game nine or ten throughout the course of the weekend, especially at LVO, you know, it, it you have to be good, and you have to know your army, and you have to be good at what you're doing with it in order to perform well. But at the same time, all these guys come prepared with armies that are going to do well, and that give them the tools to allow them perform as well as they want to perform and as well as they can perform. Because at the end of the day, if you give a good player an army without any tools to work with, he's not going to be able to perform well. So... You're not going to be able to perform as well as he may with the same exact list, but at the same time, 
he needs to have that. There's a reason that they work really hard and work really long on coming up with these lists. And they come up with interesting lists that really change things up and really uh, throw you know wrenches in, other, in, in the gears, and which is which is part of what it is. And I think that's also part of what 8th edition has brought around, is that people are finding different ways to approach the same uh, problem. And because of that, it's throwing wrenches in people's gears trying to find ways to maneuver around it. So the way you approach like a castle in with a whole bunch of guard is very different to how you approach a four knight list, even if there is a castle in there. You know, you, you also have to approach an, uh, an orc list with 200, pardon me, party bodies in it differently than you would approach a list with Gene Stealer Cult with 200 bodies in it. You know, they're both or they're both horde lists. Those are both knight lists, but they have different ways of playing you and different ways of that you have to approach them. That if you're not ready for it, and if you don't have the tools necessary to handle them, you're going to be in trouble. So if you have the ability to strike down knights really well, and you've got a whole bunch of high strength, high damage weapons going all over the place, and you run into an all knight list, you're in a good place. But if you run into a knight list that has a whole bunch of bodies as well you might find yourself struggling a little bit because he might be able to overwhelm you or get board control to the point that you just can't come back from it. Um, if you're ready for an orc horde to come at you, you may not be ready for a gene stealer cult, uh, horde to come at you because they're going to come at you differently, you know, between um, deep striking a whole bunch of guys and showing up on the board as just blips, you know, it becomes hard. You, 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 you're, you're, you're left with a different uh, situation and left with a different um, way of, of handling them that if you're not ready for it, you're going to be in trouble. So you might have a whole lot of DACA, and that's really great against the, those orcs that are coming at you across the board, but it may not be as great against somebody who just suddenly pops up nine inches away and because of all the buffs only has like a, a three-inch charge after spending a few CP. And now you're left with a situation going, oh well, you know they're in they're in contact with me, and that's the whole thing is like your your orc, your horde control maybe don't let them get in con contact with me, and I'll be good to go. But suddenly you're facing off against Gene Stealer Colt, and they're getting those those charges off on you turn two, and you know you're you're left struggling. You know what I mean? Uh, so getting a grasp on what the meta is has become a lot more difficult, uh, and I think it becomes. A little bit easier sometimes when you when you when you get into smaller areas. So if you're looking at your your local game store versus the uh, you know the the entirety of the world, like you might face at LVO, it might be different. And if you go to different locations, different areas, like I was talking to some of my friends from up in Alaska, and they were saying that uh, at their last uh, at at war at um, at uh, Battlezone Ursa, uh, they which is like the big uh, GT that they have up there. They were looking at the list, and one guy said, he's like, I counted, and there were more knights than players uh, at, at the tournament. So that meant that they're a very knight-heavy list. The knight medi met light knight medi uh, <laughs> Light knight-heavy meta that you're going to run into if you go into the northwest up there, Alaska and, 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 and Seattle and everything like that. Uh, whereas if you, <clears throat> down here in the southeast, there are, I mean, there's a fair number of knights, but not an excessive amount of. Knights. One of our top players ended up 19th at LVO, um, Ray. He ran an all night list, or essentially an all night list, to LVO and did very well. Um, but honestly, he was one of the few all night lists that I saw when I went to um, when I went and played at uh, at um, Siege of Augusta. You know, and when I was at uh, War Warzone Atlanta, there weren't a whole. There were a, there were a bunch of knights. Don't get me wrong; they're really cool models. And they do very well, so you're going to see a lot of people with them. But there wasn't as many as one might imagine when you listen to a lot of the meta from certain areas. So, like I said, a lot of my a lot of my friends from up in Alaska made lists that were getting ready to handle a whole bunch of knights, and they came down to LVO and they didn't run into as many knights as they had expected. Uh, there's still a bunch of Eldar lists out there, but I've been seeing a lot of different uh, takes on it. So not necessarily just the Yunari. You know, Yanari soup lists that you would imagine. You see a lot more uh, changing things. So not just a lay talk, but running. Like I said, I ran into someone who was running uh, running uh, Ulthway. I've run into people that have run uh, different different groups and different ways of of playing it, different compositions, and they're all they all have to be played differently. So you're not going to be facing off against an Ulthway army the same way you face off against a uh, an an Alaytok army. 
with uh, with Cat Lady, you know. Uh, and because of that, you need to be able to handle them differently and trying to grasp what it is that you're going to be facing when you're making your list and coming up with your game plan ahead of time uh, has become very difficult. So the first step is to go and see what's going on. So, you know, if you're going to be going to a local tournament, uh, see what people are bringing to the local game game days. You know what I mean? See what people are talking about on the uh, the local Facebook groups or, or talking about inside the game store. Uh, and just see what they're doing. So if you see someone that came in and they just they just go up to what I walked up to the to the cash register and just bought a whole bunch of of marines, odds are they're probably going to be running marines sometime soon. And you need to be able to be ready to handle a bunch of you know three up armor dudes that are going to be coming at you with uh, with whatever they've got. Uh, if you run, if you see someone that's got their their newly painted tyranid army and they've got a whole bunch of monsters. You better be able to handle them, otherwise, you're gonna run. You might run into them at the tournament and 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 get some trouble. Also, take a look at what was brought previously and who's coming to these different tournaments. You know, and you can get a better idea locally because you know these guys and you've seen them uh, multiple times of what they're gonna be bringing. You know, and people tend to to you know to to talk about what it is that they're working on and 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 you know and get excited about what it is that they're building. So if someone's working on a brand new army. Or painting up a whole bunch of acolytes, you know, they're going to say something about it. You know, they may not have a YouTube channel that they put it up on, but they're going to talk about it somehow in the forums or at at the, at the store or during games. Or people are going to look at, you know, look, just even look at see who's looking to get like practice games going up, and you'll be able to see what they're going to bring. You know, and if you see people bringing a whole bunch of knights, you better be able to handle a whole bunch of knights. If people are bringing a whole bunch of of bodies, you better be able to handle a whole bunch of bodies. So getting an idea of what the of what the meta is in your local area is a lot easier because what you do at that point is you just keep your ear to the ground and actually try to see what people are bringing. That's and I mean that's what the meta is is what are people bringing. So in a local level, it becomes easier where you can actually literally see the meta coming together by people talking about it and getting excited about it and uh, posting about it and practicing with it and, and playing these different games. Uh, whereas, you know, more nationally, if you're going to a bigger tournament, you know, any of the GTs, or if you're going to, um, you know, if you're going to um, like an LVO or something like that, or, or the Grand Clashes at, at Warhammer World, something like that, if you're going to go to a big tournament like that, it becomes a lot harder to really grasp the meta, which really pulls me back to how I build lists and what I plan on when I build lists. Um, it, it harkens back to what I'm talking about with these guys that make these lists with um, with purpose. You know, everyone makes a list with, or the best people make a list with purpose, where every unit gets placed on that list because it's designed to do a particular job. You know, it's designed to do something. So if you've got uh, Hammer Aberrants, for instance, they, they're put into that list because they're designed to punch big, heavy things. You know, if you run them into a whole bunch of termagants, they'll probably be able to do well, but that's not what they're there for, and they're not going to be doing as much work for you as, you know, a bunch of acolytes would, or pure strains, or even aberrants with picks would do uh, for you in that kind of situation. So, people put different units into lists to do particular tasks, and you want those tasks to cover the the entire gambit of what it is that you can face. So if you go into it going, well, as long as I don't run into X army, I'll be fine. Odds are you might run into that army, you know? And then the bigger the tournament, the more likely X army is going to be present, which puts the odds of you running into it higher. So if you run, if you're running a list and you're like, as long as I don't run into Grey Knights, say you're running a demons list and you're like, as long as I don't run into Grey Knights, I'm going to be fine. If no one in your local area has any Grey Knights, odds of you running into them at your local tournament are slim to none. You know, you never know. There could be some random person who comes out of nowhere and decides to join the party and comes with their Grey Knight army and then just puts the smack down on you. But if you go to LVO, every single army was present at LVO. So there was an Assassin's Army. There was even a guy that was running just a Warhound Titan. 2,000 points, Warhound Titan. His one model drop. That's it. That's all he ran. He went 0 and 6 for the tournament, but that's what he brought, and I thought that was hilarious and awesome. It just goes to show you that those bigger tournaments 
you're going to run into something. <laughs> you know, they're out there and somebody ran into a night uh, it ran into a Warhound Titan at LVO. Six people ran into a Warhound Titan at LVO. So if you design lists that are going to be good unless I run into something, the smaller the tournament, the more acceptable that becomes. But if you're running if you're running it at bigger tournaments, they're going to be there and there's always the uh, there's always the chance that you're going to run into them. So if you're looking to make a list to give you a shot at being aggressive and 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 shooting for the top spots. You need to be able to be expecting to run into every single thing. So if you're looking through your list and in your practice and in your estimations and determinations, you go, well, I really struggle against this army, as opposed to going, well, I hope I don't run into that army. Go, why do I struggle against it? Is it because I run into too much trouble with their psychers? then maybe you try to shift your list so that it can bring in some psychers, you know, or you bring in uh, some understanding of how to face off against that so that you know that. So for instance, if you're Necrons, you don't have the, you don't have the option to bring in psychers to counter their psychers, but what you can do is you can bring in some death marks so that you can drop them down to snipe their, snipe, snipe their character, snipe their psychers to allow you to, to counter that, uh, that situation, that problem. If you sit back and you go, well, I have a really strong, I really have a hard time against high toughness things. <clears throat> Even at your local tournament, I, I can almost guarantee you you're going to run into someone with some high toughness things and you should be able to handle that. Uh, and that's what it comes down to. And you have to have a game plan, you have to have an understanding, you have to have uh, uh, some experience with your list to know what to do when you face off against these things. And like I said, you don't play your list the same way against your, the same way against an all knights list as you would against a against an orcs list. Uh, and you should know that going into that matchup, how you're going to play your army. So maybe with if you're running Gene Stealer Cult, for instance, maybe you put different units in Deep Strike uh, or Underground than you would uh, against a different one. Or maybe it causes you to spend some extra CP to get some more tools to go and uh, and handle certain situations. You know, maybe you give different relics uh, to to your characters uh, than you would normally do in order to allow you the flexibility to handle different uh, different models. You know, so if you're running into a night heavy list, maybe you consider giving the anointed throng uh, sledgehammer to your abominant, you know? But if you're not, if you're running into a whole bunch of, of bodies like an orcs, that becomes less critical because you don't need those those big high strength, high, high damage attacks against the orcs. You're looking for a number of shots. So now maybe you give someone else something that allows them to get more more attacks in there you know what i mean maybe you hide them uh, a bit differently maybe you put your aberrants down on the ground to to draw your enemy in uh and then drop down a a, a squad of neophytes with 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 shotguns to blast into them with a number of attacks or maybe you have a 20 man uh acolyte squad with hand flamers which you're running against knights I mean, yeah, sure, that's a lot of shots, but you know, you're you're not really going to be doing a whole lot of damage against them. Uh, so you, maybe you hold them out against the knights. You keep them on the ground underneath one of the blips because they become more of an objective holder for you during that game than if you're running into all those orcs and then you spend the CP and drop them three inches away from his big blob of orcs and they just unleash into him, killing a whole bunch of them. You know, hopefully killing the whole squad so they don't just come back the endless green tide you. Um, so. It just becomes a matter of making lists that give you the tools to handle different situations. So like I said, if I'm making a list, I'm not just going to have only aberrants with hammers because if I run into the knights, yeah, that's great. But if I run into orcs, suddenly I'm putting myself at a disadvantage. Uh, and, it, and it harkens back to everything I've talked about, which is making all comers lists. Um, in 7th edition, it was less uh, possible to really make all comers lists that were, that were really effective against all comers. Um, just because of the fact that it became a game of rock paper scissors a lot in seventh edition, um, in eighth edition it becomes far more light, far more far, it uh, becomes far more viable to run um, all of uh, to run an all comers list because you kind of know that if you're going to be running into you're going to be running into hordes, you need to be able to have enough DACA to handle that. Uh, you need to have enough um, strength to handle some high strength guys that are probably going to be coming your way. You need to be able to handle uh, psychers in either by counter psyching or by uh, being able to snipe out their, snipe, their psychers. Whatever it is, you know that there's certain things that you can face. And uh, the bigger the tournament, 
you will face <laughs> is what it comes down to. You know, you're not going to be able. There's the odds are that there's not going to be zero psychers at LVO. You know, odds are there's not going to be zero knights at LVO. Odds are there's not going to be zero orcs at LVO or zero necrons or zero tau. Like that's just not the way it happens, and that's not the way it works. You have to be uh, understanding that when you go to these bigger tournaments, you're going to run that the the possibility of running into them becomes uh, extra. It, you know, becomes higher. And you may not run into him. Like I said, I didn't run into a single orc player the entire time I played there. I played against, what was it, one guard player who didn't have a knight. I ran into an all-knight list. I ran into those five flying demon dude bros. I ran into uh, two Eldar lists. And what was the other one? So I had the guard guy. I ran into the demons guy, Eldar, Eldar, knights, and... Was it another guard list? It may have been another guard list. I can't remember offhand right now what I ran into with all of them. But yeah, I lost to two. I lost to knights, the big flying demon bros, and Eldar. And I beat Eldar. I beat guard. And I can't remember what the last one was. Oh man, that's slipping my mind. That makes me sad because, like I said, every single one of my games was a ton of fun. Um, win, lose, and draw. Win, lose, or draw. So I had a really fun time with all of them. Um, but yeah, I didn't run into every single army. I didn't run into every single list. Um, and I had a bunch of friends who ran into things that they didn't expect. You know, suddenly they're facing off against a whole bunch of uh, Necron vehicles, and they're like, "I was not expecting that." You know, and all of a sudden, the the, uh, the shielding that they've got on there became a big problem for them. And they're like, "Well, they ran into trouble, and they didn't do as well as they expected against it because, you know." They hadn't prepared for it, and that's just kind of part and parcel with like these big these big tournaments. Is that if you give yourself the tools to at least have a chance against all of the different types of um, types of, of of opponents that you're going to face, then you give yourself a chance, and then it becomes a uh, it becomes a game of can you do what you have to do, you know? And 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 honestly, the tools might just be a different game plan. So if you have a whole bunch of Ghiblis and you're running into four knights and you're like, I just don't have, I just can't handle four knights. It's just not going to happen. So what you do is your game plan becomes your counter to that meta. And your game plan becomes, all right, well then I'm just going to try and, and, and play to the objectives and jump on every single objective and play board control and just make him come to me and force me out. Because a lot of times, you know, these knights are designed, like a Castellan is not going to do great or is not going to do as well as it could do against a whole bunch of, you know, single wound models. You know, you get, you shoot, a, you know, you shoot a, a volcano lance into, into a, a group of, of soldiers and you're doing D6 shots and you're doing, you know, 3D3 damage to, for one wound. They don't care. You just really blew them up. <laughs> and, and at that point it's like, why even bother? You know what I mean? So... Knowing that that's what's going on and knowing that you have different game plans to, to approach these situations becomes key. So grasping the meta becomes less of, can I, am I going to have the, the hammer you know, to, to, to knock them against the anvil? Am I going to have the rock to face off against their scissors? What it becomes is, I've got something that, I've got a rock that's really good against these scissors. If I run into paper, I know that I'm going to have to bash my rock and separate it into a whole bunch of pieces so hoping that the paper can't wrap all of them and if the paper can't wrap all of them then I've got a chance on objectives that I can jump on and, and get those wins you know and that's what it kind of comes down to is the situation like I said when you saw the final game that happened between uh, Brandon Grant and Alex Harrison he got countered really hard and the guy came forward shot and killed his knight really early on beat without his knight being able to do a whole bunch of work and even the, the commentators were saying, this is like turn two. They're like, well, his knight's gone. You know, I think he's, I think it's pretty much over at this point, you know? And that's what you would think. But the fact is he didn't. He had a game plan. He had a backup plan. He knew what he was going to do. And he's like, if I lose my knight, then my job is to jump into hiding, grab all the objectives that I can, and hold on for dear life. <laughs> and he did. And he successfully did. You know, he, he bubble wrapped his characters so they couldn't be sniped out so that they could jump up onto objectives at the end and did a fantastic job of playing to the objectives so that he could hold more and, and hold and hold more and get himself points 
up until the end where his you know his board control allowed him to ground ground control his board control allowed him to get all the points he could out of ground control and he got himself the victory because of that so like i said grasping the meta nowadays becomes less of knowing the the optimal list to take to smash the meta it becomes understanding the different routes that the meta are going to take towards you so understand that you're you're probably going to face off against knights understand you're probably going to face off against hordes understand you're probably going to face off against um eldar shenanigans understand that you're probably going to face off against um psychic shenanigans so psychic spam from the thousand suns and understand that each of these different things are very viable and each of these different things are going to cause you trouble if you're not ready for them so have a plan so like i said with my list i had a castellan i had a gallant i had uh samael two talon masters five or four scout squads with five guys in each and two uh, aggressor squads and i gave myself all of the tools that i needed to handle the different kinds of meta that i could face so i had the ability to take on knights i had the ability to take on hordes and it just became at that point I've given myself the tools with the list, now I need to play them right. And a lot of times I did, and a lot of times I couldn't do what I needed to do, and my opponents outplayed me and beat me, and beat me fair and square. You know, I don't think there, was, there wasn't there was a single game that we played, that I played, that uh, the result was uh, just dumb luck. Every single time I lost, I felt like I reasonably lost, I lost to my opponent, my opponent outplayed me and did well. You know, could things have swung different ways if the dice were different? Sure, that's the way every game works. If I only rolled sixes the entire game, it would have been hard to beat me. <laughs> you know? Um, but that's just not the reality of what happens, and I got outplayed. And what you have to do is you, you, you make your list and you play your game with an understanding that you're not going to roll only sixes. And I got outplayed, and I got beaten. Um, I think that, uh, that each of those times and those situations... I could have done things differently, but that's what you learn from, you know? You learn to focus down certain groups as opposed to splitting fire and making sure that you kill everything in those situations so that you can clear yourself out. Uh, you know, to make sure to check and be, uh, watch how aggressive you are or how non-aggressive you are. Because there was a couple times, there were a couple situations where I was not aggressive enough, where if I had moved up faster, I could have done better, gotten more points. Uh, there were times when I got too far ahead of myself and left my left left gaps that my opponent was able to uh, take advantage of so with all of that it becomes a gameplay situation where i go into it with my list knowing that i've got the tools to handle all of these different things and now you get down to handling the meta in understanding how you deploy those so if i run into all knights i need to focus down certain knights i need to focus down certain situations and i need to be able to hold on to objectives and play to the game you know that's what it comes down to and if i'm running into hordes i need to just hold out and try to willow, willow them down so that i can then push out from there and that's what the game has become and that's what it that's what it does so i think in seventh edition handling the meta meant getting a list that gave you the best rock so that you could smash every single scissor you came up against and just hope you didn't run into paper because if you ran into paper you were in trouble Nowadays, I think with 8th edition, with the viability of, of, of pretty much every army and the viability of different strategies and different ways of, of approaching and different list building, that the best way to handle the meta is just have a game plan to play your list towards those. So make a list, uh, an all-comers list. An all-comers list isn't just a bunch of everything. What it is is you have specific units whose task it is is to handle specific situations so if i run into an all knights list my aggressors now are clearing out screens that's what they're going to do that's what their job is to do is to clear out screens as best they can and once they do that then my knights can hopefully handle the rest from there if i run into a hordes suddenly my aggressors are now the main thrust of what i'm doing and my knights are there to really just absorb as much as possible to allow my 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 aggressors to, to mow things down uh, and then my character speeders are just really good <laughs> doing everything that's what they were there for um, but yeah so handling the meta is very much about knowing how to play your list knowing your rules and knowing what you can and cannot do 
in certain situations. So if a situation comes up, and like I said, if you're playing Necrons and you run into Smite Spam, you know, you're not going to be able to counter it with, with other Psychers. You're not going to be able to deny them. You're not going to be able to throw some Smite Spam back. But what you can do is you can have some Death Marks that you know are there. To Their job is purely, as much as there may be other juicy targets, you know going into it, it's like my Death Marks have to face, have to go after their Psychers. Because if I can't take out the Psychers with my Death Marks, he's just going to hide them behind a bunch of Cultists and... I'm never going to see the end of them. And they're just going to keep smiting me, keep putting all these different psychic powers into me, and it's going to hurt, and I'm going to die. And that's what's going to happen if you don't handle it. So your game plan becomes very concrete, and you have to stick to your game plan. So you can't use those death marks to like go after, the, ooh, there's that really juicy target over there that I could just I could pick off his warlord over there, you know, and I, I could get him, and I could get that point. It's like, that might be worth it, but your game plan has to be take care of those psychers somehow, otherwise you're just going to en end up just dying in the end. So, yeah, I know, I don't know if that really helps to really grasp the meta, uh, what I talk about, but what I think it is, is a way to deal with the meta, and the fact that I think the meta is, is nigh ungraspable at this point, uh, if you see a lot of these things, you know, I think you see a lot of knights, so I think you prepare to handle high toughness. You're going to see a lot of bodies, especially with Gene Stealer Cult coming out, um, and allying in the Tyranids, and, and, and even just with guard screens, you're going to see a lot of bodies, and if you can't handle a lot of bodies, you're going to have trouble. So your list has to be able to handle high toughness somehow. Your list has to be able to handle high numbers somehow. And your list needs to be able to handle a bunch of psychers doing psychic shenanigans into your face somehow. And if you can handle those somehow, you're going to have a list that, that will provide you with the tools necessary to win games at tournaments. And win games, period. Uh, and if you don't have those tools, you're going to run into opponents that are going to bring, they're going to bring the paper to your rock and there's nothing that you're going to do. But if your rock knows what it has to do when it faces paper, there's a chance for you to win, you know? There, these are all, all these tournaments and all these games all have objectives, and you always have to play towards those objectives. And if you can play towards the objectives, you're going to win. Um, even if you lose your night turn two on, on live, live streaming <laughs> at, for the final table and the final game of LVO, uh, you know, if, if, if you can't handle that, you're going to lose. And it would have been really easy for, for, like I said, for Brandon Grant to just like roll over and be like, well, I lost my knight turn two. He didn't do the damage I needed to and lost. And no one would have been, wouldn't have held it against him. They'd been like, yeah, that's just the way it works. That's the way the dice rolled. And you just, you were unlucky this game. But he didn't. He played to the objective and said, I can still win this. And he did. So have your counters, have your game plans, have your backup game plans. And that's the best way that you can prepare yourself for grasping the meta and handling the meta. And don't worry yourself too much about thinking about specific lists because a lot of what I saw at LVO weren't the same list. They were different tweaks on similar themes uh, throughout, but they were very different and that made it interesting. And that made it all the more difficult to have had a pre-plan against specific lists. So go out there, make your list that gives you the tools necessary to handle this and, and, just, uh, and just fight it until it's all over. So, um, let me know what you guys think. What do you guys do to handle the meta? Your local meta or your tournament meta, whatever it is. Let me know. Uh, in the discussion, keep the discussion going. Let me know what you guys think. Um, and if you think what I'm saying is a bunch of BS, let me know that. I would appreciate you saying it. I just agree with you. <laughs> but um, I, I still like to hear what other people have to say about all this. So keep the conversation going. I appreciate that. All right. So I hope you guys have all enjoyed this. I certainly have. I have been Phil the Glacial Geek as always. And until next time... Have fun.